Okay, before we get into army composition, let's uh, get the elephant out of the room. Uh, <laughs> why have I based them on rounds? Um, plainly, um, the most easiest answer is that aesthetically, I really like rounds. And uh, I play a lot of different game systems, and I wanted to make this army and any other army I make um, as most flexibly capable of playing in as many different game systems. So, for example, um, the rounds are used in, say, Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game, uh, Warlords of Erewhon, um, Age of Fantasy, Dragon Rampant, uh, Lion Rampant even, um, Saga, Age of Magic, Age of Sigma, all those games use rounds. Uh, the square-based games like Warhammer Fantasy and um, well, Age of Fantasy Regiments, those type of things, uh, even Oathmark. Um, those games can be got around with movement trays. So the movement trays that I'm using are currently... I, I get some custom ones made by um, war bases, which I use for the cavalry, etc. And then I just picked up these these ones um, from Renedra. I'm pretty sure it's Renedra. Uh, it's just plastic, 20-man units um, with rounds. They are bigger than uh, a regiment tray. Um, but because I'm never going to use this army in a in an official Games Workshop tournament or anything like that, I don't think it really matters. These are some of the ones I've had made for cavalry, and I've got 10-man uh, ones um, for sort of ranged units and smaller skirmish units, that sort of thing. Alright, so that's that out of the way. Let's get to the core units. So, effectively, um, I'm following the Warhammer Armies Project um, uh, Stalian Army Book. For reference uh, sort of for in guidance if you like so I'm going according to the options and stuff that they can use on that um, but I'm also keeping in other games in mind so for example uh, you can see a unit of handgunners over here this is in a unit of 12 now normally when I played Warhammer Fantasy I didn't use units of 12 it was normally 10s and 20s that sort of thing um, but when I started getting more knowledgeable about the game when you're playing toughness 3 and low armor units, you might want a little extra padding in the units. So 20-man units are quite easily defeated. So I bulk them up to 25, 30-man units. Um, so I could still do that here. Uh, as you can see, these pikemen over here, this is a 24-man unit. Because in Dragon Rampant, uh, you make the units up in 12s. Uh, Warlords of Erewhon is generally 5 to 10. Um, Age of Fantasy is generally... 5, 10, or 20. Uh, so, you know, it gives me, it just gives me the flexibility. So, that's a unit of 24 pikemen, and you can see there, they're on one of the movement trays. They are, as you can see, slightly um, bigger uh, surface area. But like I said, I don't mind. Um, most of the people I play against will be using um, figures from my collections anyway, or they have similar sort of base collections. So, it's not a big deal. So, um, yeah, so I've got two units of pikemen, this unit here of 24 pikemen, and I've got another unit of 24 pikemen over there. Uh, that'll form the core sort of infantry, if you like, um, to, to sort of hold positions and uh, sort of form my anvil, if you like. Pikemen are pretty good in most um, additions, especially against cavalry, that sort of thing, obviously. But these these pikemen units, um, to represent sort of, I suppose, the tertio from the Spanish infantry from, say, the Thirty Years' War, you can have guys with swords and shields in the front rank um, to buff up the armor value and take most of the brunt of melee combat, uh, while the pikemen sort of stand up in the range and give support, that sort of thing. And that you can do here. Yeah, as well, so as you can see, I'm going to try and put up um, sort of screenshots of the book, the book that Matthias has made for the Stalians, and you can see sort of what I'm looking at. So you got the Aventuros and the uh, I forgot on the other one now, the, but basically swords and shield guys, pikemen in the back, and you can have kind of like the Empire um, detachment rule where you can have sort of ranged units on the flanks to shoot into units. I think it's called tactical supremacy for this game. So I've got two units of handgunners over here. Um, I can either make one big unit 20 or two units of flanking 10, almost or 12 rather, almost certainly going to do that. And I have a unit of crossbows at the back there. 
I've uh, attached in some flags. The flags are just printouts from the internet. Uh, these ones are um, a Spanish tertio flag. Now, the stallion flag looks similar to this, except it has the stallion shield in the middle. Um, because I'm theming my, arm, my army slightly differently, uh, for one, I'm doing a Portuguese version of Estalia, which is the Portuguese flag right there. And I'm basing a lot of my army on some Portuguese explorers like Vasco da Gama, which is that flag over there. And Bartholomeo Diaz, Fernando Magellan, those kind of guys. And the narrative story that I want to run with this is going to be very similar to actual history, but in the old world. So that should be interesting. Maybe you guys will see that up on the channel. If you like it, please subscribe to see more. Okay, so yeah, I've got three ranged units, two infantry units for the pikes, and those are all from War Games Atlantic. Everything over there is made from the War Games Atlantic box sets. They give you enough options to do the swords and shield guys or the pike guys, obviously the command groups as well. They give you the handgunners and the crossbows. So you can make everything from those, and you can also make halberdiers. You can have halberdiers in this list or in this army, but I haven't chosen specifically to make any halberdiers for two reasons. Um, one, I'm going to make a special unit, um, which is sort of a, an elite guard unit that has halberdiers as their weapons. So I wanted them to stand out from the rest of the units, you know, from the rest of the basic infantry guys. Um, I'll come back to another reason in a little while. But before we go into that, I'm going to show you some skirmishes. So these are the Amalgavars, guerrilla tribesmen from the mountain ranges, and uh, they are armed with javelins and short spears, hand weapons, those sort of things. So I've got two units of 12 here, and they are made from the Fireforge Infantry Amalgavars um, box set, which you can see over here. Um, they, they were really easy to put together, nice little kit. Uh, I made a couple of conversions for the unit champions. So this one's just got some of the um, War Games Atlantic heads and shields and arms, in fact. Actually, I think the shields are from this group. And I made a couple of standard bearers with this tertio flag, or the stylian flag, as I'm going to be using, calling it from now on. But you've got to have some infant, uh, skirmishes, and in Warhammer Fantasy, skirmishes are great. So two units of them, two units of 12. That'll form the nice little skirmish line. Uh, and then over here with the cavalry, so in the previous video, you might have seen my um, dogs that I worked on. They are now obviously painted. They have a handler at the end there. And uh, they look alright. <laughs> They're not too bad. And then behind them, you can see these cavalry models. So this is from Archon Studio. My friend John um, bought a box of this from for, for Christmas, which is called the Townsfolk Miniature Pack. <laughs> he bought that and then decided to hand over some of the extras and uh, bits and pieces to me. He also thought, because I've been looking around for cavalry, I know Wargames Atlantic are going to be doing Conquistador cavalry at some point, um, but of course I'm impatient and I wanted to get some cavalry to field with the army. So he donated these to me, which was brilliant. Uh, they are t just a tad on the smaller scale um, than the rest of the army, but you can't really tell. I mean, I suppose one of the things is because that's the only cavalry unit in the army at the moment. You can't really tell that they are that much smaller. Um, they're not, and they're not that much smaller, to be honest. Uh, I think they're fine. They'll do fine. Uh, in Warhammer Army Project, uh, you have like uh, different cl classifications of cavalry. So you've got light cavalry, medium cavalry, heavy cavalry, and monstrous cavalry. Now, the light cavalry in the Stalian army is the genitors. They have uh, javelins and bucklers, those type of things. The medium cavalry is the caballeros, which I'm going to be representing these guys as caballeros. They have um, sort of spears and shields and sort of light to medium armor. And then um, you get the conquistadors as well, which are also medium cavalry. And they have more of a dual purpose uh, cavalry unit. Where this is more the standard, you know, run off light infantry and skirmishes, smaller units like the war dogs, those type of things, maybe hit units in the flank, that type of thing. But they're not really your smash down infantry units cavalry. So I think they'll be nicely represented by that unit. Um, these are 
great little figures actually from um, Arkham Studios uh, that, that came in the task force, but really easy to put together. Um, they're obviously just three sculpts. You've got the, the one with the sort of banner bearer, the lance spear pointing down, and then the swords. But they work perfectly for well for what I want them to be. And I'm looking forward to actually getting them on the table to use. Yeah, I'm a big fan of cavalry, if you haven't heard. Oh, I was talking about the, that. That was obviously the two medium cavalry units. Then the heavy cavalry unit that they have that uh, you can use is uh, two knightly orders. Knights of the Blazing Sun and Knights of the Righteous Spear. Um, I got an idea for uh, Knights of the Blazing Sun. Whether or not I'm going to add the unit, I'm not sure yet. We'll see. They don't have the option for monstrous cavalry. But I do feel like, um, because, you know, the sort of the bull motif is quite popular with uh, Estalia. And there is a chance that maybe someone will bring out some sort of monstrous bull cavalry. So we'll see. We'll keep that option open. But that's for now my cavalry contingent, which is these war dogs and those caballeros. At the back there, I've got the two cannons. Um, I've still stuck with their 3D printed um, scaled down cannons that I used um, for now. I'm using them as falconets, so there are slightly smaller options um, that you can use for lighter cannons, kind of like the um, Bronzino's Galloper guns, except obviously these aren't Galloper guns, but those are the same sort of strength, strength 7 cannons, that sort of thing. Um, I'm not quite happy with them yet. I also think I spaced them on two smaller bases. Um, I can't remember what the exact size was, but I think I should go one, one bigger, because they're, they're basically the same size as the Ogre's are on which i'll get to in a minute um but i think maybe i should have gone with a big one i don't know what do you guys think comment below um i'm still in two minds of whether or not i want to keep them or even use them on those bases or <laughs> anything like that i don't know uh, i'm always d the dather dathering about things like that which are really not that big a deal uh right let's go over to here to some of the special stuff so yogas these aren't actually in the army list for Warhammer Army's project, but ogres are generally considered uh, dogs of war units in any army. Um, as the Ogre Kingdoms list, well, used to, I don't know if they still do in Age of Sigmar and stuff like that, but they always used to be dogs of war, and you can use them in any army effectively. So, there we go. Look at these models. How can I not use them in this army? They fit perfectly. They are from Titan Forge. Uh, so, this was a three man unit that I 3D printed off. And then this was a separate model, so they didn't come as a group. They came as two separate SDLs. And this was an ogre captain. And I thought he would make a brilliant sort of minor character, if you like, for the ogre stuff. As it turns out, I got these printed out and painted up. And then I found out that Wargames Atlantic are doing ogre lanchniks. I've actually got a box on pre-order. And I'm quite looking forward to um, seeing what I can do with them. I think there's nine in a box. I'm not 100% sure, maybe 8 or 9, I can't remember. Um, I probably won't need that many. Um, I might make another, because I've got these 3 plus the leader. So I might make another 6 to have a unit, sort of a squad of 10 if you like. I don't know, I'll see. There's a part, of, my friend John thinks that they might be slightly smaller than these ones. I hope not. Um, I hope they're matching nicely. And you can see them next to the cavalry as well. So... Uh, you know, they are quite chunky, good size. I like the fact that the, the cavalry aren't quite as big as ogres. It gives the ogres a real menacing presence. These are great figures, by the way. They printed out brilliantly. They were really good to paint. Uh, Titan Forge do some fantastic stuff. Um, i got plans for one or two other small special units as well. Um, but, you know, just getting the core stuff together first. And then we'll get on to... Some more interesting things. And then, of course, the arm is going to have a ton of ogres because of those Lanchnik ogre boxes that I've got coming, plus these. Um, and then I might, I don't know. Again, if you have any ideas, comment below with what you think should be added to the army. I'd love to hear some ideas. I'm very open to ideas. You know, <coughs> It's easy to, to, you know, just make up rules or points or whatever for them. And then, finally, we look at some characters and some miscellaneous stuff. So, this is the Marco Polo figure. Um from Games Workshop, which is going to probably, I don't know, be maybe Vasco da Gama or both Diaz or Magellan. Uh, he is going to be one of my sort of character pieces. And then these are the, some of the captains. Uh, this is a 3D printed miniature. This is also a 3D printed miniature from Last Sword, but I've added a pistolier gun to him. 
and this is i was going to use as a duelist because he looked fantastic as a duelist this is also a 3d printed miniature um from oh i've forgotten the name <laughs> ian ian something i'll put a, a link down below uh and then a wizard i think this is from north star miniatures and then two uh inquisitors over there one is a 3d print and one this one's the 3d print i did forget to scale it down so he he's quite a tall fella uh and this is from somewhere i have absolutely no idea i i an interesting thing about this is i and i've mentioned this in the previous video is like i'm using these as my inquisitors because i wanted them to look like um sort of you know catholic popes and bishops and those type of things but now that i've seen them in the army i'm I'm almost wondering if they're too popey, if you know what I mean, and that maybe my inquisitors should be more, I don't know, warrior priest looking, I don't know, uh, it's quite thematic, and I was thinking maybe I should get some monks, and then just put the monks, scatter them into the units, you know, sort of as like religious fervor, I don't know, motivators, <laughs> but just for, you know, thematic sake, I think that'd be quite cool. These two down at the bottom here, these are from the same, um, fellow is that uh this is what i'm going to use as the mayor he's a fantastic figure by the way really nicely detailed and it was i just couldn't resist painting him he could be one of the the three leaders magellan fernando or um Bartholomew diaz vasco da gama one of those and then i thought you know what let's get a lady to go with that as well she came out really nice so those two will be running the the port and then there's some extra bits at the end. There's three donkeys and a cart. The cart is from Last Sword. The donkeys, I have no idea where they are. They just were in my collection. <laughs> I thought, wait, I'm going to need some pack mules for some scenarios and what have you. So I added those in as well and painted them up for this. The cart is actually was painted for my originally for my Empire Army. I've got another one, which I'll do up as well. But at that point, that is everything I have painted. So just have a quick scan through and you can see the army as a whole it's come along nicely you know lots of figures added the building as i quite like the look of as armies grow and you got all this extra bits and pieces to play with uh, i got some more things coming just to show you as well um these are some extra figures uh, i was mentioning about the townsfolk box that john gave me for archon studios these are some of the figures that came out of that box. So there was a few others as well. Uh, there's, they're scattered around you in the in the the units. I think there's one. So this guy, this fellow over here, is one of them. So he's quite nice. So quite characterful. You got some crossbowmen over here. Over you can see I've changed this guy's head um, because he came with a more medieval style helmet. Um, which wouldn't fit in with the rest of the army. I didn't want to do as many, many changes to these because I quite like the figures. They're quite characterful. And I wanted to keep them as much close to as how they came as possible. But this one and this one, I had to change the heads because they just did not fit in. That's why I was carrying a spear and I didn't think a spear worked considering I have no spears in the army at all. So I've modeled him up to be marching like those guys over there. He will probably fill into that unit. And then I'll take out the second banner and fit that into a different unit. Um, but yes, so at the moment, we've got some extra dudes over here. These will be sort of guardsmen once the um, city is up and running in the old world of Lustria. Oh, not Lustria, Southlands. These guys will be just city guards. And and then I'm going to add, I said I've got that special halberdier unit. Um, I've got, I want to try and make a fireballs unit, uh, which is going to act like fanatics sort of thing. Um, I've got a few more infantry units I think I need to make. Maybe another crossbowman unit. Um, I don't know if I'll do another pikeman unit. Maybe. Uh, probably too much. Obviously got the ogres coming. And then I need something big. Something centerpiece -y. And I think I've got the perfect model. Um, I will show you guys in the next update when that comes around. But there you go. That's a nice long wind, windy video of me talking about... Uh, my Estalian army. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, comment below with what you guys think and if you have any suggestions for units or even figures. And I'm always on the lookout for figures. I know Titan Forge. I put up a preview for February 
and I think they're going to be doing conquistadors or something of that ilk because uh, on January they did lizard men or something of that ilk um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what they come up with and what little tidbits I can add to this and of course I said um, uh, more games Atlantic are doing conquistador cavalry I can't wait for that to come out but this is my Stalin army and I'm Jason see you guys later